Other news, two astronauts have been found alive after being forced to make an emergency landing when the booster rocket carrying them to the International Space Station failed. They're now both being checked over by medics and officials say that they look in good condition. Is it emergency of booster 2 minutes 45 seconds, the uh, emergency, the failure of the booster? A few minutes after uh, after that launch occurred, we did hear from uh, our Russian counterparts that there was an issue with the booster aboard the Soyuz that led to the contingency, which uh, meant that the Soyuz came back in a ballistic descent mode. Uh, they have, again, now landed about 20 uh, kilometers east of Jessica's gone, and uh, we are now hearing that they're in communication with the rescue forces on their way to the capsule and that they're in good condition. Well, joining us now is astrophysicist and space journalist Sarah Curtis. Hi, Sarah. Um, thanks for joining us on the Cape Valley Show this afternoon. Uh, we don't know what went wrong yet as a result. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, Soyuz has been um, grounded. Thankfully, they're in good condition, but it poses lots of questions, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And I think the thing with um, rocket launches is when something goes wrong, it's never simple. So at the moment, we've still got three astronauts on the International Space Station. They have got a way to get home. There is the Soyuz spacecraft there. But if we don't know when we're next launching, we don't know when we can send the next crew up, which means it's not a very good idea to send those astronauts and cosmonauts home back to Earth because otherwise we'll end up abandoning the space station and that can have all sorts of implications. So at the moment, we don't know what has gone wrong, but what we do know has happened is that the escape system works. So we haven't seen a major malfunction in a Soyuz rocket like this since 1983. It's the most reliable rocket um, that exists, particularly for crewed launches. The last time we had a malfunction on this level in America was the Challenger disaster back in 1986. So obviously something serious has gone wrong when the booster actually fired. Now the booster is the second part of the rocket. So the main, the first stage of the rocket that gets you above most of the atmosphere. And then the boosters, they give you that final push to help you get into orbit. And something went wrong at that stage. And then what happens is either an abort is forced automatically or someone on the ground back in Kazakhstan actually forces that abort. And what it looks like, it was an automatic abort, which caused the two astronauts to come back in what's known as a ballistic re-entry, which is instead of when astronauts normally return from Earth and they almost like skip like a stone along the pond, they fell direct down to earth before a parachute opened. So they would have thought, felt a huge amount of G-force, around six to seven times the force of gravity against them while that was happening. So thankfully they are alive, but it certainly wouldn't have been a pleasant experience. But as with most things, astronauts and cosmonauts, they train and prepare. And it's likely that they're mostly just frustrated about what's happened and certainly what's going to happen next. So what does happen next? Well, the first thing to do is to start an investigation, which Roskomos, which is the Russian space agency, has already announced that it's going to start to do. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when rockets go wrong, it's never a simple thing. If it is a simple case, we could see a crude launch very shortly. In terms of what we're going to do with the, the astronauts on the space station, that will be, we've still got uncrewed supply ships which you can go to the space station and send them supplies, things like extra oxygen if they need it, extra food. We've got enough supplies, the astronauts on the space station are fine, but it's all about having an investigation because at the moment the only way to get to space, to the International Space Station, is on board the Russian Soyuz rocket. China is the only other nation in the world which launches astronauts into space, but they aren't involved with the International Space Station. So a big investigation is going to come into play. If things are okay, we could see another launch by the end of this year, perhaps early next year on the Soyuz. If there's something more complicated, it might be a case of waiting for the commercial crew. But at the moment, we really can't speculate as what's going to happen next. Where are the Americans on uh, launching rockets to the ISS? Well, at the moment, um, NASA recently announced over the summer the commercial crew, which means Boeing and SpaceX will hopefully, within the end of this next end of the next year, or hopefully by the end of this year, actually launch Americans from American soil once again, but they haven't been tested with astronauts on board yet. So although the technology is there, it hasn't been tested. So at the moment, it's only the Russians which can get us into space. And then we have somebody like um, Sir Richard Branson saying, I'm going to make sure that you can get into space by the end of the year. 
That's completely different, though. What Virgin Galactic is doing is suborbital flights, so they're going to a much lower altitude than where the International Space Station is. That's around 400 kilometres, which is around the distance from um, London to around York. So the International Space Station is much further in space. Virgin Galactic is a 15-minute suborbital flight, which means it skips up just into space and then come back, comes back down to Earth. So this is more to do with space tourism. In terms of getting to the space station, it's just Russia and the Soyuz rocket, which can enable people to do that at the moment. OK, so who's up there on the ISS at the moment? Even if they can get back down, at the moment, if they did come, as you were saying, they would have to abandon the International Space Station. What would that mean for the ISS? Well, it's not something um, that's likely going to happen and certainly they'll be looking at all contingencies before they actually abandon the International Space Station. So at the moment, there's a Russian cosmonaut, a German and an American on board the International Space Station. They were looking today to welcome this new crew coming on board, but instead they'll be doing other activities. There's always contingency things in place. And I think it's important to realise that every machine fails, every transportation system fails, accidents happen no matter what form of transport we're on. So we should expect that for space. And I, I don't think the astronauts or the crew on board the International Space Station will be overly surprised. They've trained and they've prepared for this, as are the teams. But the next step is really to work out whether they can stay and they'll do everything possible to enable that. And hopefully it's a case that it was something more simple and they can send further crew up. OK, for now, thank you. Thank you. Now, it's uh, a well-documented fact that...